Hey, it's Scott Tempesta from Sailing Anarchy, back with another one of our retro look videos. This one is really compelling. It's retro, it's modern, retro, maybe a little more modern. This is a Stevens, Stevens wearing design, 59 feet, built in 2007, and here it is. One, two, three, listen. So here we are on board the Marjorie. As I stated earlier, this is a Stevens wearing design, uh, built in 2007, 59 feet long, weighs about 49,000 pounds, cold molded boat in, in the most beautiful tradition, but it, in addition to the laminates, it's got a layer of Kevlar built in there for any kind of crash structure protection, really kind of a smart thing. This is a catch, some of you Know the difference between a catch and a yawl? I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial. Catch is when the mizzen mast is forward of the rudder. A yawl is when the mizzen mast is after the rudder. Yawl, got that? This is a catch, traditional in every way in, in appearance, but it has some things that aren't so traditional, say like electric winches, say like carbon spars made by GMT, hydraulic backstays. It's got a lot of the, the modern goodies. And then it's also got some of the really old school looking stuff. I mean, these aren't high tech looking winches. They're actually really nice winches. They just happen to be brass. You've got blocks there that look like they came from an era that you might think this boat was made in. But no, they're modern stuff. Just gives it the look, the feel of the spirit of tradition kind of cruising boat. We talked a little bit about how this boat is a really nice mixture of tradition and modern. Let me show you some of the modern part. Check out these instruments. This is the latest B&G Zeus 12 system. I mean, it's got everything in the world you could possibly need. These are repeaters, so the helmsman, no matter where he is, can see exactly what he wants there. You can call up anything in the world you could possibly want relative to this boat and the ocean. There's also a repeater downstairs in the nav station. so. Anywhere you are, you've got the latest technology there. And I mean, why wouldn't you? This stuff is here, you're not gonna, I mean, it does have the, here's a good contrast actually. So all this and then the old school compass. And so it, that's nice, but this is really nice. Here we're about a midship on the Marjorie and we talked about the theme of old and new. Here's a perfect example. Old style Genoa cars stop track really old looking not that efficient this is efficient spinnaker poles made out of carbon that works so here we are right at the mast pretty obviously the old belays you know it's just that's so great but it's right next it's attached of course to the carbon rig and then check out this boom bang hydraulic super huge i mean these are the areas where you're going to take advantage of technology on a boat like this you save a ton of weight in these spars you have perfect control on the mainsail leech with this that kind of boom bang you come forward here and there's also this is kind of the business end of the boat in so many ways this is the windlass again an old school looking one but i guarantee that it's electric i guarantee it basically ready to anchor at any time because you do anchor a fair bit on this boat. This is the hatch for the crew quarters actually down below. And you can see teak deck, beautiful varnish everywhere. It's a really gorgeous boat. And my understanding is, and I've not sailed on it, it's really quick, surprisingly quick for a boat that weighs nearly 50,000 pounds. Stevens Waring draws a really nice boat. And when their task is to design fast into a traditional looking boat, they're really, really good at it. So I wasn't expecting wire standing and rigging on this boat. Now granted, this is some substantial wire. It's very, very solid, really nice turnbuckles, all stainless, of course. It's an interesting mix though, between wire, old school wire rigging and a carbon mast. Typically, if you're going for a mast, you wouldn't build it out of carbon unless A, you wanted to save a ton of weight, B, you wanted some performance out of it, and therefore you would go with C and that would be rod rigging. 
or even composite rigging on some of these boats. But in this boat, you would think the default choice would be rod. Here, I think they look, we're looking for some measure of safety um, over rod. I, I don't know how true that is, but that's what they have. It's beautiful just because it is, again, we, let's go with that theme. It's the old tech and the new tech. And uh, I think it works beautifully on this particular boat. Okay, now that we've seen the deck and the rigging and the winches and the electronics and everything else here that's cool, let's head down below and see what it's like in there. All right, welcome to Down Below the Marjorie. First thing I notice about this boat, it's very rare for a boat of this type, this size, to have the main companionway uh, open up into and go through the owner's stateroom. That's the way this particular boat is. Obviously very nice double bunk. Interesting also to have the nav station here. You would usually think the nav station would be forward. This boat's very compartmentalized and we'll, we'll explain each and every one. Let me show you this. An area, again, I never go near like the winches. I don't touch them. I say that, but I do. Engine room. Like there's some major machinery back there. Um, I pity the boat captain that has to crawl back there and do the dirty work but that's just the way the boat is. And uh, yeah, I try not to go there, but you have to have it on this boat. It's got sophisticated systems, you know, water makers and all kind of electronics. And so this boat, you know, requires a lot of work and a lot of the work goes on in there. All right, let's get forward in this boat. You'll notice here is hanging locker. I believe those are air conditioning vents. Okay, um, obviously drawers for storage. Here's the head, the owner's head, and you can tell it's the owner's head because it's got gold-plated faucet. So that designates it as the owner's bathroom. Let's move forward in the boat. This is the traditional salon, but a little less than traditional because you've got the galley right here. Sometimes boats, they try to move some of this out of the way so they have it a larger salon. This boat doesn't. Obviously it's huge, everything you possibly need. Um, again, fit and finished, you know, to every detail is just nothing short of stunning. I mean, it's just a beautiful boat as it should be. That's why they build the boats because they like to build them traditionally. And this one certainly has a lot of traditional features to it. All right, we're in the main salon. It is traditional. It's got the heater because they take this boat in some colder climbs. Um, it has you know, obviously nice seating. It's got a place for a, another bunk up there when it's not filled with guitars. Very traditional fold out table for dining and entertaining. Very, very nice. Somewhat compact for a 59 foot boat, but it's a good way to give each area like its own definition. And that way the boat probably stays less cluttered. Uh, things are done a little more efficiently not a modern open layout at all this is by design this is the way it is and actually it's really nice down here so we're about to head forward in the boat and there's a reason why i'm squatting down i'm going to show you by standing up okay so this designates that we're entering the crew quarters uh so you got to bend down and come in here that's already really inconvenient that's why they do it for the crew i swear they must do it on purpose uh you come in here They've got their own head here. They've got the hanging locker here, store some sails there, covers there. And then here's their two bunks with their little TV. And this is where the crew stays uh, most of the time, sort of out of sight, out of mind, but it's an essential part of a boat like this. You cannot really take this boat anywhere uh, without a, a crew. And so they have the designated quarters all the way up here. And that pretty much completes the interior of the boat, as I said, beautiful in every way. It doesn't matter where you look, just everything about it. It just speaks of quality and tradition. It's a really nice, really interesting and super comfortable place to be. This was the Marjorie and is the Marjorie. It's beautiful in every way. I mean, I probably use the word beautiful about a hundred times because that's the best term to use for this boat. It's just simply beautiful. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. We'd love for you to subscribe to this channel. You can do that as well. And for a list, uh, a playlist of all of our retro look videos, they're right there as well. For Sailing Anarchy, I'm Scott Tempesta. We're out.